Carolyn Diesler. I've talked about her before. I reviewed one of her books. I think it was The Vegan Reset or Vegan Detox, something like that. She got pregnant and I talked about some of her pregnant What I Ate Todays on Instagram that she had posted to Instagram. Not a huge fan of the diet. It's very like fruit, carb, vegan sort of thing. Not a whole lot of protein. Very, very limited in terms of ingredients. Gluten-free, so everything is, is basically fruit and rice and dates, some nuts. Like I said, she did get pregnant and she did have her baby, I believe a while ago, a year or so ago now. And she has posted a what I ate today. Thank you to the person on Instagram who sent this to me, by the way. And I will have the baby's face blurred. Her face is not blurred in the original. She's plastered all over Carolyn's uh, Instagram, of course. It's pretty typical for influencers to do. Although I do see that changing with a lot of accounts that focus on like talking about being a mom or being a dad and they don't show their kids' faces, which is very awesome and shows that like it is possible. You know, you can talk about the stuff and be a like parent influencer and not, you know, exploit your kid's image. And to be clear that she is like a baby again, she's like one year old. And I really don't have an issue, honestly, with one year olds being on the platform and showing what they eat and stuff like that, right? I mean, obviously some take it to an extreme, but I really don't have a problem with anything like that. But given what we've seen from other influencers, it's likely she's going to get older and still be on the platform on like every single photo and video. Not great in my opinion. Point is not my baby, so I feel a lot more comfortable just blurring their face. We eat in a day, 11 months old and vegan, having fresh food for breakfast, pineapple, oranges. Okay, I can't, I can't with that music. So we're just gonna read the text. So 11 months old, orange, pineapple, vanilla pudding. I don't know why the vanilla was in quotes. There's not actually vanilla in it. I don't know. I'm guessing it's one of her recipes, like from her book. I remember that a lot from looking at her other stuff in the past. It's a lot of like, here's another recipe from my book. This is going to be for the savory reset guys you can eat the whole thing so this entire video is just buy her ebooks i guess which is fine you know sell your shit hustle i guess but it's kind of funny when it's like obviously very simple recipes again i looked through one of the recipe books and it's mostly just like dates and dates and dates and cashews and dates. Point is lots of healthy fruit, lots of vitamin C and antioxidants to start. Looks great. I'm guessing the vanilla pudding, again, just going by what I know of her stuff, it's fruit. See, this is where like, I don't get mad, but I kind of do like watching this baby eat bites of a, an orange segment. Like my kids could never, that's not true. My third final baby, my now about 19 month old, the universe said, you know what? You've been through enough. <laughs> You've been through enough with the pickiness. Here's a kid who will just eat pretty much whatever you give them. And wow, wow, is it nice. Now I say that as a picky person myself, I will not just bite into an orange segment. No. You wanna know how I eat oranges? <laughs> if I actually eat them, I peel the pith and everything off with a knife. Like I shave it off and then I cut them into like little squares. I don't leave them whole where I bite pieces off because then you might get the stringiness and then that's it for me. I'm done with oranges for like months maybe. Or I will slice them, leave the peel and everything on and just slice them into little orange slices. I will just kind of bite into them and suck the juice out. I won't actually eat any of the, the edible <laughs> portion. So I'm basically juicing the orange in the least efficient way possible. Least efficient and most disgusting way possible. Point is, I deserve everything I'm getting with my <laughs> picky children. <laughs> but yes, it is nice having a, a third child that just eats things and isn't overly concerned with texture and strings. Banana strings, man. All right, we got a brain boosting smoothie for a snack. Frozen blueberries, banana, dates, hemp seeds, walnut, water. Sounds fantastic, right? We got some really healthy fats from the hemp seeds and the walnut, lots of omega-3s there. More antioxidants from the blueberries and the banana and fiber and yeah, fantastic. Lunch, we have some mac and cheese. Looks really creamy and yummy, I'm guessing 
cashews, right? <laughs> Maybe nutritional yeast. It looks a little bit yellow. I don't know if she fucks with nutritional yeast or not, but uh, yeah, looks great. And then we've got some roasted pumpkin, which is fantastic for vitamin A. We've got edamame, which is one of my absolute favorite protein sources. It's so delicious and it's just so healthy, right? There's so much protein in it and there's also so many vitamins in it. Minerals as well. It's just an overall like perfect food. Oh, it says nutritional yeast. I'm a dum-dum. Using chickpea pasta for extra iron and nutritional yeast with added B12. Fantastic. I honestly don't know who would have an issue with that lunch. That is like a perfect lunch for a baby or for a grown up. Super healthy. And again, just eating like crunchy edamame. I mashed the edamame to avoid choking. I mean, I love it, but um, my kids, if only. <laughs> All right, we've got some oat banana muffins that are very, very cute. Wait, why does it say black baby led weaning over here? What does that mean? When I go to the hashtag, it's, it's, it's a lot of black babies. I mean, maybe the baby's black, I don't, I'm gonna leave it. Speaking of baby led weaning, do you guys want me to do a video on that and like the evidence on baby led weaning and my personal experience? Um, let me know. Again, I remember there not being any like gluten in her other stuff. So I'm guessing this is, I'm guessing this is oat based. It looks oat. It has that kind of gummy spongy look to it, which is totally fine to be cl clear. Oats are super healthy and great for kids. So yeah, looks great. I like that she put, not sure. I like that she's not pretending that the kid loves everything they eat when, when they don't, right? I appreciate that. Okay, now getting some breast milk, breast milk throughout the day. So that was gonna be kind of the big, um, thing for me, I guess, if the baby is still meeting a lot of their caloric needs with breast milk, then it's a lot less important what food they're eating, right? As long as they're just eating solids and trying new foods because they're still meeting a lot of their nutritional needs from breast milk. And vegan breast milk is totally fine. The main thing is B12, right? As long as the mom is supplementing with B12. And given that Carolyn is talking about B12 in this little reel, talking about the nutritional yeast having B12, I would guess that she also supplements with B12. So yeah. That's great. So now we have 6 p.m. dinner, coconut ball, carob ball, broccoli, and cucumber. That would be the other possible concern with vegan kids is fiber and water and just the amount of food. While we want our kids, all kids, whether they're vegan or not, to eat lots of fruits and vegetables, it can be overdone, right? To the point where they aren't getting enough calories because they're eating so much broccoli, cucumber, foods like that. So we do want to make sure they are getting lots of calorically dense, healthy foods like cashews, right? Like nuts and seeds. For a little kid, obviously you would give them nut butters. For a little, little kid, you would give them just a little bit of nut butter mixed with water. They can't have something super thick, right? Tofu is an excellent food as well that is very nutritious with, you know, more calories than something like broccoli or oranges. But it's also going to depend on the child to a certain degree, right? Some kids just struggle more to get in more calories. And so you really have to be careful giving them a whole lot of fruits and vegetables. That doesn't seem to be the case at all with Carolyn child, to be clear, she looks super plump, like good baby plump and healthy. She looks like a healthy little kid. Again, I like that she shows like, nah, she's not into everything. <laughs> I saw protein. I saw edamame. I saw lots of vitamin A and vitamin C, lots of minerals from the edamame. The oats that I'm guessing were in the little oat muffin thingies. Talking about the nutritional yeast in the pasta, giving some extra iron and some extra B12. It shows that Carolyn is paying attention to nutrients needs and not just like give her fruit and she'll be fine. Just make sure she gets enough calories, right? Like she's actually paying attention to possible deficiencies. That's excellent. The omega-3s from the hemp and the walnuts, again, fantastic. So important for everyone. I'm guessing more healthy fats in the carob balls and the coconut balls. Although again, baby didn't really like that, but you know, that's how it goes. Oh, here's another one. We've got a bunch of fruit, some dates and pineapple, and I think that was mango. Leftover dates, my, like I said, she, she likes her dates. Date lover as her mommy. Some buckwheat porridge, only a few spoons of buckwheat porridge, gluten-free pancakes, avocado, cucumber. <laughs> she literally turned away from it. Okay, she's eating it now. One and a half pancakes. Hey, that's pretty good. Banana, oats, dates, almond butter, blueberries. Fantastic. More avocado. Ooh, we've got a lentil wrap. 
with looks like for more some more avocado and a berry smoothie. <laughs> that bib is very useful. Oh, we've got some very pretty beetroot cashew pasta, leftover avocado mash and pineapple. So lots of avocado for this kid, which is perfectly fine. I don't think there's any tolerable upper limit on avocado. <laughs> it's a very healthy food, very healthy fats for baby. That's fantastic. More healthy fats from the cashew. It looks like some nutritional yeast on top or like nutritional yeast Parmesan on top. Now I would like to see mention of B12 in this one. It was mentioned in the other one as well as iodine, right? Like she's not getting any iodine from this unless Carolyn is using iodized salt on, you know, the edamame or the pasta or something. Those would be the two big ones and probably just a little multi in general, just to be safe. Again, she is still being breastfed as well. At least she was in the other video. I assume she still is getting some amount of breast milk, but B12 and iodine are the really big ones. And for my kids, they do get a multi every single day. We use the Renzo's multivitamin chews. We've used those for years. I'm not sponsored by them. We just really like those. And then protein as well. Again, as she gets older and she's slowly going to be eating less and less breast milk and eat, getting more of her nutrient needs from food, it probably would be a good idea to have some protein source at every single meal. Whereas right now she's just having like fruit for breakfast, one or two overt protein sources a day. Yeah, a, a pediatrician would probably want to see you having uh, some sort of overt protein source, some sort of tofu, chickpeas, black beans, something like that at every meal. Editing Swayze here, I totally forgot about calcium and vitamin D. Now, if I remember correctly, Carolyn is a sun buddy, so I assume that her baby is probably getting a good amount of sun too. Definitely not recommended uh, for, you know, obvious reasons, but would make vitamin D, you know, not a concern. Okay, so I found this My Healthy Lifestyle guide from 2019. It looks like she doesn't sell this anymore, which is good because about vitamin D, she says, another natural way to get more vitamin D is to eat more sun-ripened organic fruits and vegetables. That's a new one for me. I've read a lot of crazy raw vegan stuff, but I've never heard someone say if you eat sun-ripened <laughs> fruits and vegetables, you'll get enough vitamin D. That's incredible. And by incredible, I mean, no, no. Oh my God, no. Calcium, again, she's getting breast milk, but is weaning off. My kids get their calcium fortified soy milk every single day. It's really, really important to have a rich calcium source. And if you don't want to do the non-dairy milks or calcium set tofu, something like that, then you really need to make sure they're getting in their calcium rich greens, calcium rich and low in oxalates. So yeah, it's like it's not really that many options. Picky eaters, you know, there's there's a good chance that kids aren't going to eat that much. Personally, I would be very concerned about a vegan kid who's not consuming some sort of calcium fortified soy milk. And finally, selenium might be a concern. Um, again, looks like she's not eating a whole lot of grains, at least going by Carolyn's diet, right? There's not like gluten containing grains. There's no wheat. But like I talked about in that page Shea video, Brazil nuts are an insane source. This is why I'm so hesitant to recommend vegan for kids, even though it definitely is possible. I feed my own kids vegan. My kids have other vegan friends who are perfectly healthy, but you really have to have a good grasp of nutrition and or have someone on your team, a professional dietitian who really understands vegan nutrition for kids. One more thing, I didn't say anything about the simplicity of the food because again, we're talking about an 11th month old who's only been eating for a few months. I would have m much different feelings if this were like a four-year-old who's only eating fresh fruit, avocado, broccoli with seemingly nothing on it. Like that, it, it'd be a little bit concerning, not just for the lack of variety situation, but also just psychologically, particularly once kids start entering school. I think it's really important to have a lot more variety and to make sure that kids don't feel left out. You know, unless your kid's okay with it, like you probably don't want them sitting at lunch with some steamed broccoli and fruit and hummus and carrot sticks. Now the other kids have like sandwiches and cookies, you know, 
Some of these comments are so weird. I'm a vegetarian since 30 years. Both my adult kids have eaten veg since they were a newborn, but vegan is not for babies or children. Your daughter is not getting enough vitamin Bs, carbohydrates, or fats in her food. <laughs> Did you see the amount of avocado that kid was eating? <laughs> and cashews, like what? Carbohydrates, what? 90% <laughs> of her calories are coming from carbohydrates. What are you talking about? And of course, lots of comments like the baby didn't choose this, the baby didn't choose vegan. Okay, your baby didn't choose to live on fucking chicken tenders either. All right, that was mean, but like, you know what I'm saying. We all choose what's right for our kids. And it's clear that kids can be healthy on vegan diets. So like, leave us alone. <laughs> I have no problem with criticizing bad vegan diets for children, obviously. Criticizing just the very idea of feeding kids vegan is pretty silly, especially when it's coupled with kids need meat. Like, that's it. That's, that's your argument. Okay. So again, I was really nervous going into this, but um, I was pleasantly su surprised. Again, just probably increase the protein a little bit as she starts consuming less and less breast milk and also again, B12, which seems like Carolyn is aware of, but iodine as well. Iodine is so important. And for kids who are not drinking cow's milk, there is a very good chance they're not getting enough iodine if they are not consuming iodized salt regularly, like every day, or getting a multi with iodine. Or seaweed, you could do small amounts of seaweed every day. Just be careful because certain seaweed is really, really high in iodine. You could have the opposite problem, which is why I prefer using iodized salt and or a multi. And for those interested in balanced vegan nutrition for children, I highly recommend this book. It's written by two registered dietitians. It is my absolute favorite source for vegan nutrition for children. I'll put my affiliate link in the description so I do get a little bit of money from that, but you can also just Google the book and order it that way if you want. I think you can order directly from their website, although I think it still just sends you to Amazon, maybe. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I would love to know your thoughts on Carolyn's diet or diet for her baby. Please like the video and subscribe. And thank you so much to all of my members and my patrons at patreon.com slash unnatural vegan. I do post two exclusive videos there a month for tier two members and patrons. I do a vlog video and then I also do a controversial topic or quasi controversial topic. Yeah, that's it for me. Thanks guys. New video soon.